Outside events meant little. In a society changing radically by the hour, we watched the images scatter nightly across the TV screens. Young protesters spoke about how they were going to change our lives and fix the world. But while they shouted their slogans, my friends and I went to funeral services for the young men of Hell's Kitchen who came back from Vietnam in body bags. We viewed with skepticism the faces on television, those protected by money and upper middle class standing. A growing army of feminists marched across the country, demanding equality. Yet our mothers still cooked and cared for men who abused them mentally and physically. For me and my friends, these developments carried no weight. They might as well have occurred in another country, in another century. Our attention was elsewhere. We sat with Father Bobby in a third floor hospital ward visiting John, hoping he recovered from a punctured lung. A gift from one of his mother's overzealous boyfriends. I hope you like these. You better not tell me you don't. Father Bobby didn't let that situation rest. I gave on Sunday. I'm in a rush, OK? John Riley. A little punk. Got out of line, so I put him back in line. No big deal. Just put him in a hospital. He's alive, ain't he? Look, if he's smart, he learned himself a lesson. What are you, about 220, 230? Yeah. You're a big guy. How much do you think John Riley weighs? 80, 85? That's not even a featherweight. If this were a fight, you'd be way out of your division. Look, it was a slap. It was nothing. Well, next time you'll be meeting me. And I may not be in your division, but I do weigh more than 85 pounds. And you won't need a doctor when I'm done. You'll need a priest to pray over your body. See you in church. <laughs>